Pie. Are you experiencing tunneling? No. Hello, my little dandelions, and welcome to another episode of Crafting with Daniel. On today's episode is the first in a series I'm like, I like to call, we're gonna call it, um, okay, it's the, it doesn't have a name yet. Candle making problems, no. No, it doesn't have a name yet. Where I break down different problems that candle makers have and how to solve them. Today we're gonna to be focusing on not spiraling, but tunneling. I don't know about you, but during the COVID-19 pandemic, I got into the art of candle making and now have a candle business running out of my basement. And when I first started with my first ever candle kit that I got from Michaels, uh, which if you're starting candle making, the first step I would recommend is getting a candle making kit. And don't just do it because you think it's like a good business idea and it'll make you lots of money because it's- It's, it's very difficult. And I, yeah. One of the main problems I have, and I don't have this any now, I don't have this problem anymore or else I would have an example here to show you, is that sometimes when you're pouring wax, specifically with paraffin wax, when the wax hardens, it contracts. Maybe I'll put up a little like animation here. Um, so the wax contracts and kind of makes like a dip, a crater, uh, like a sinking thing, or even a sink hole, which is when there's like a hole in the wax. The best solve for this would be to be doing a second pour of wax to heal that up or even run a hot gun over it. But that would be sinking, sinkholing, sinkholes. But one main thing that I'm going to be talking about is tunneling. So here I have an Ikea candle. This isn't my candle. Uh, it, it, this is what is tunneling. It's when the wick burns down and doesn't get a full melt pool. So it creates a tunnel. Get it? Tunneling? Great. In my experience, people don't come after me. This is, often happens when you are under wicked. Cut to a definition here. Under wicking is when your wick isn't suitable for the width of diameter of your jar so it's not able to reach a full melt pool and this new jar i am testing out for these like jam candles i tried with an eco 8 and it didn't i burned it for i think three to four hours and it didn't get to the full edge it kind of left a little hook there as you can see the wax is just coating around the edge which isn't as bad as the ikea candle i have here but it's still not great a, a really good candle for most candle makers out there and candle addicts is when you get a full melt pool so i'm going to create another one i don't have an eco 10 but i have lots of other wicks using my go-to flaming wick candle guide which I have been using since I started candle making, which shows which wick you should use for which diameter jar you have. So an Eco 8 didn't really work out. I'm either going to try pulling this wick out using pliers, and if it doesn't come out, I'm just going to melt it down and re-pour it to show you what a properly burning candle should do. So tip of the day is if your candle is tunneling, you just need to wick up most likely. 99% of the time in my experience, it has just been wicking up. I'm actually gonna cut to footage of me making this candle and what it should look like when it's burning. So again, this is an Eco 8. I'm gonna wick up probably to the HTP series since I have a lot of those in my basement and we'll just see, we'll just see what works out. All right, if you, this video helped you today, please like, comment, or subscribe as that always helps me grow my channel and uh, let me know if this tip worked for you in the comments and if you experience tunneling at home with your candles or with your personal life because it's a tough time out there and we are all here for each other. Oh God, this is taking a turn. Okay, hope that helped you out. Good luck candle making out there. Stay crafty, everybody, and trim your wicks. See you next time.